and we'll call time 1529. Made a motion to approve the minutes from the dispatch board meeting on the 8th, 2019. Motion. Motion by Billy. multiple people on three different committees um, what I'm uh, proposing is that we'll have three assigned to the personnel committee and then that we will combine the equipment and the budget committee with three people on that committee therefore you're only serving on one committee and um, realistically to be able to purchase new equipment it's going to have to be approved by the budget uh, anyhow so you would have both of those issues in one house um, but I just want to bring that to, to the board to see if there's any discussion uh, on that. Sounds good. I'm proud of that. Okay. So going on the personnel committee is going to be Sheriff uh, Pitaroa, Chief Billy Mattingly, and Ted Shields. And on the equipment and budget committee is going to be Joe Pruitt, Joe Seeley and Jelly. Moving on, we've got the schedule of the 2020 dispatch board meetings that's the, um, next on our agenda. We'll continue to have them here unless there's an issue uh, logistically with anybody coming here. We can just uh, have them at this here. I'd like to uh, continue the second Tuesday of the, of the month when we do hold our board meetings. Um, and then the, the difference is, is I would like for us to meet every other month um, and on the off months that we're not meeting, have the committees get together and, and meet with any issues. Therefore, the committees can come to our meeting the following month <coughs> and report out um, if there's any personal issues, any equipment needs, or any budget issues. And then so we'll be having contact every other month as a board and on all those off months, the committees will meet together. Chief. Uh, I don't know what anyone else's schedules look like. Speaking for me personally, I would prefer mornings for our meeting times. Okay. Um, I again, that's that's my opinion because sometimes it's awful difficult to drop something in the middle of the day to the team and then go back and finish up. But whatever else is, you know, everybody else's pleasure is, I'm fine. But I can speak from my experience. I would prefer mornings. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to also suggest to, to change the times uh, to be a little bit more confusing to everybody. So uh, I'm fine with mornings. Does anyone have any issues with morning meetings? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Would that be agreeable? That'd be perfect. Um, it, the first and third. Yeah, yeah we're on the first and third or Tuesday of the month. Both second Tuesday. Unless you're doing your committee meetings. You know, if there's any reason the committee personnel need to be in fiscal court, then you might have a problem. Right, but we can work it 30 minutes. Well, the committee's doesn't have to be on, on Tuesday. They could 
and they can meet whenever it's convenient. Okay, I misunderstood you. I thought committees will meet on the off month, so we're like we're meeting January. Up, I'd like to see the committees meet in February. Just not necessarily on that too. Right. Okay, I, mis I misunderstood. You all can meet whenever it's convenient for the three of you all, and then we'll convene back on the two, second Tuesday of the following month. I understand. Uh, and then speaking of the uh, back to the committees, um, I'd like to do a committee chair for each committee to make sure that that you guys are sitting together and setting this times and schedules. So for the personnel committee, the, the committee chair would be uh, Sheriff Pinarella. And then for the budget uh, chair would be uh, Joe Pruitt. And then you guys would just be responsible for ensuring that you guys meet and any issues would come through you all to uh, the director of the So we want to set uh, March the 10th will be the next board meeting. Okay. Be the second Tuesday of the two months, five months. Okay. Any other discussion with the committees or the dates? I'm good. Okay. Moving on to number seven will be the director's report. <clears throat> At the uh, last regular meeting, we talked a little about the record agreements. Those have all been turned back in, and I have those in the office. Who wants to see them? I do have the rate schedules and as well on the certificates of insurance. Um, one of our dispatchers recently has moved back to their hometown and left Mills County Dispatch and taken the position with Lawrenceburg PD. Uh, we have four new dispatchers that are in training right now. There's one on each shift, currently about halfway through the training program. And we've been um, reporting monthly to the Kentucky Retirement System for about the last year. There's been no issues, everything's gone, gone well with that. Uh, most recent report we submitted by the end of this week. And our training coordinator, Shannon Cheshire, Cheshire, has been working with the Kentucky Law Enforcement Council in Richmond. Currently, six of our dispatchers have earned an intermediate public safety dispatcher certification through KLDC. Participate in that program, the dispatcher must have been working full time for two years and completed 56 hours of training beyond the academy. And dispatchers who participate also receive some college credit for that as well. That's what I've got for right now. Any questions from the director's report? Okay, moving on to committees, um, personnel committees. I would like to see, um, and we've talked with Milt on this, um, getting your your policy and procedure up to date and. Um, one of the issues that was brought up while I was the chair was the vacation time um, to get it squared away, whether we have to come up with a calculation format similar to what we do with the uh, fiscal court. We submit our hours and it tells you how many hours you're getting or if you guys want to go like what they did now, um, 90, after 90 days, they'll give you your 40 hours for the year or the 30 is it 30 or 40? 40, 40 hours for the whole year, and then you'll relapse again at, the, at your anniversary date um, to, to ensure that the staff is, is being up to date on that. Other than that, I don't have nothing else from personnel. <clears throat> and on the vacation and personal time, I'm in the process right now of an audit of the last year to make sure all, everything's been accounted for. So I think that's in the works right now. So I guess just to catch everybody up, what is there? What was the issue with the vacation time? Um, some said that they didn't have any accountability of what they had or what they didn't have. We currently got one who wants it on the pay pay stubs. We when we were under the city city of, of Bardstown, it was on our pay stubs. When we went off on our own and did our own financing, they, uh, our accountants did not put that on the, the check stub. So where do we? Where do you keep the vacation balances right now, for them to see? All on that and the, do they get to see that like yeah, monthly? They, they see weekly? I, mean, I don't go out and say, "Hey, here's your thing," but they want to see it. Like I just come and say, "Hey, you know, I see." I think it's a good idea to send um, an individual email to the employees to see what kind of cost would be involved in putting it on the, the checks. Doesn't mean if, if they want to put it on there, I'm, I'm okay I, with that. I, I'm not sure why it wasn't put on there when we went off on our own. There may have been a reason behind it. I'm not sure. So. We didn't. History. We were all pretty green at what we were doing, and we didn't actually specify that particular item. 
second vacation time, <coughs> and I think the accountant just assumed that we were going to take care of it in house. Okay. But I agree. I think uh, for everybody's peace of mind, if, if an employee can see how they're accumulating it when they get their pay stub, yeah. it'd be beneficial. Well, my, my issue is this that if somebody's going on vacation constantly and somebody that is not, how are we keeping track of it? To make sure they have it. Right. And two, let's say they leave like you just had this individual leave and they say you owe me this much, but we don't have something tracked. No, but, uh, I think it's checks and balances and accountability of, of the process on it. On my paycheck, I don't get it anymore, but all the deputies and, and stuff and my staff for, for the sheriff's office, they get a printout of what they have. And I don't know if it's an easy fix to just say, here's your anniversary date after 90 days, here's 40 hours. Um, and then you use it however you want. It's just, and food for thought, just ask around. I don't know how the city does it, but it's kind of, yeah, we have that know, it's kind of the same, same, same thing. Yeah. 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 So. I do like the fact that what we changed before we were getting accumulated time at each pay interval. And it was pretty confusing in itself, sick versus pay, or six versus vacation. Today, today like Sheriff's saying, uh, the new policy is your 90 days, you get 40 hours. At 12 months, you get additional 40. So you get two weeks, actually, after the first year. And then at five years, you get three weeks. But uh, I, I like that. You, you get out of orientation, now you've accumulated some vacation time. And that might be something that would be easier for the county to keep up with instead of, well, this one gets 1.7 hours, you know, we can say we get this, this, and this. And at each interval, they would, they would uh, add that to their account in sick or vacation. So just listening to all the board, this is something uh, I think that I'm kind of speaking collectively, collectively for the board that we want this implemented ASAP immediately, that we don't want just this like, study this and think about how we're going to do it that we're we're so we're saying that we want this implemented like immediately um to, to get that process started so um the, I'd like the, to make a motion. yes i'd like to make a motion to take whatever steps necessary to have the sick vacation time reported on the employees based of i'll second that and i would suggest to kind of mirror what the sheriff's office and the city pd and city employees are getting if after 90 days go ahead and give them their 40 hours and it's kind of like a retention uh, incentive for them to stay with us <coughs> as an agency to say hey we're giving you 40 hours early let's take care of you let's you know is there a carry over policy Carry over with physical court it's got so many uh, hours that you can uh, hold and if not you use or lose well it was not exactly you can roll it in roll it over six times, times, times you or cash it out 240 hours you can cash out a week a year or a week every six months and then anything over that you can roll in six times we can't carry over vacation time we carry over our personal time but we can't carry over well, that's, we, we have six, I mean, it'd be nice if, called, yeah. if the county called it personal time, but they still classify it sick hours and vacation hours. Thanks for bringing that up. I think that's a great morale booster for the dispatchers to be able to, to visually see what their balances are, just to know that they have that, so. Um, anything else here? No. Uh, equipment committee? Any vote on that motion? Oh. Yes. So, oh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Jeff. Yes. Uh, equipment committee? Uh, the only thing I guess we would report is we did get the two backup power supplies in, and Milton's placed them upstairs in the radio room. So if we do have a failure, we have some backup. Okay, good. Yes, mm -hmm. thing on the Just to add to that. Excuse me, the chairs have been ordered, the contracts been signed and, and returned, and the chairs have been ordered, so they should be here probably about five weeks to manufacture time. Budget committee? Uh, <coughs> current numbers. 
as of uh, November 30th, uh, budget is, is looking very well. Uh, of course, as copies of that. I'm uh, 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 sorry. Uh, so, uh, Billy, you got one, Billy? <coughs> Billy does have one. So as we look at it uh, on the first page, your budget versus what's been used, the percent of budget, you'll notice that uh, we should be at about 41.6% at the end of November of our budget. Uh, revenue is at 28%, but uh, I point out that we have not received uh, the significant amount of tax revenue that we've received in December, so it's not reflected in November. But uh, I can assure you it's well above the uh, where it should be now in revenue. Um, the only thing that we have that is uh, salaries and wages is running a little bit up, but but the part-time wages are significantly under budget, so uh, that that comes back in line too. So everything else. Uh, looks very good on our, our budget so far. Um, I'll entertain any questions you want to have. Any questions? Question on the overtime, Joe. Is that actually say like you had somebody call in sick today and you had to pull somebody in a bill that's not scheduled? Is that the overtime or is this it, like it's how ours is, you work so many hours and then you right. go overtime. Additional overtime and the regular overtime. Okay. Anyone have any other questions you want to have to look at it? Moving on to, oh, I'd, I'm sorry. I'd like to, if we would, for the record, I'd like for us to start getting the board approval of the budget financial, if we could. I think it'll give it a little more teeth that we're not just looking at it as the moment. So I, I'll okay. put a motion to accept the uh, budget report. I'll say. And can we get these budgets for the next meeting? Uh, like ahead of time for the meeting, so the board members will have time to look at that before the actual like I board would meeting. Hope so. <laughs> uh, I got it right. Okay, that'd be great. Uh, our accountant does run about two months behind. Um, okay. She reconciles it. Uh, we'll have probably at the March meeting we should have Jan. I would think, Bill, if I'm wrong, would we not have January's financial but the March March to be on January. We'll just have to push it on. And then I'll send them on out as soon as we can. Moving on to old business, uh, next you'll see the solution uh, to the media sustaining radio compliance. Um, if uh, someone would like to make a motion to table that to the next meeting, um, I think it would be um, important uh, to have a meeting with the sheriff and with Joe on those issues. I'll make a motion to table it to the March meeting and come up with a solution for the media to in compliance with the radio. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> and then next on the old business is going to be the interlocal agreement. <coughs> no, you're right. um, just going to give you an update on where we're at. I believe it was probably back in December. I sent out an email to everybody about where we were at with that process. There were changes. Um, that had been put into place by Kentucky State Police for our CGIS agreements, and that requires, at that point in time, it was unclear on whether or not it was just the terminal or the agency, the, the dispatch center itself, would be under management control of the law enforcement agency. Kena APCO has been working with the Kentucky State Police. I spoke with the president of Kena APCO this morning. That language has been uh, rewritten so that the center would remain under the board management however the uh, link the siege's terminal would have to be under the uh, management of a law a single law enforcement agency be it the Barton police department or the sheriff's office one of the two 
they said that that language has been cleaned up. Of course, they got a new commissioner. It's not sure. I'm not sure if the Lieutenant Colonel will remain, and he's the one that actually approves these. So we're still kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. The main issue that a lot of centers across the state had with the original wording was that it was very vague and it was very, it was open to a wide open to interpretation. This person says this is what we meant, but someone else could come along later and say, no, this is what it is. And it could completely change the ballgame for us all the way around. So that's why the Kena APCO and a lot of the agencies and across the state were, were working, fighting on this one. So it has been uh, it has been cleaned up. Uh, it would have to go under the uh, one of the agencies, and it also the management control of the link terminal has to be specifically spelled out in the interlocal agreement. So that's going to be a, that's going to factor into the interlocal agreement as well. So that was the my sticking point on the interlocal agreement. Uh, from that standpoint, it looks like we're <coughs> Okay, right now, but there's still some um, some potential for issues. I do have a copy of the uh, of, um, you know what we're reading from another agency in the state where they actually have it in there, the management control, how it's actually worded, and that's actually been approved by their CSO. So we need to get to, get to the point where the committee is working on drafting that interval agreement. I've got a copy of that we can use that to try to mirror. Uh, I think we're not going to meet until March. I think we would be proactive in going ahead and discussing and taking action on putting the single law enforcement agency in charge of the Lincoln CIC. We can maybe post date that to take effect at a time whenever it has to, but. Um, I think we need to go ahead and probably have a discussion on that. What is the deadline for approval on that? The city council? Well, it, there is no approval until we resubmit what it is we want to change. That's what I'm saying. They're going to have to have that approved by the 3rd of June, are they not? Will be in the fiscal year? That they uh, right on that date? I hope they would approve it sooner than that, but they could. Okay. He has put our, our deadline as we July 1. Right. That's what I'm saying. The absolute latest it can be approved. That's when we have to have something into Kentucky State Police. Right now. Then that's kind of what I'm driving at. I would agree with Joe. We'll go ahead and get these issues worked out so we can we can have plenty of time to have this in place and have it submitted to the local governors. Well, I'd like to come back to the next meeting with a draft of the interlocal agreement with the language in it so that we can either up or down at that meeting. So we can get it over to the city council. And uh, it's, it's important time for them to run it through legal. So far as I have to do that, I mean, it's going to be a lot of time to do that. I guess my question is, what what responsibilities do the do the agency that's it's going to be under take on? It would well um, from here. A singular CJA criminal justice agency will have to accept full responsibility to ensure that the information system meets the CJA security policy standards. The all agreement must state which CJA has management control of CJA and must be approved by the CSA. For okay. us, nothing would, would change at all. Everything would, would remain as it is, but whichever agency would be over the CJA, but it would still be in dispatch. Nothing would actually physically change from what we're doing right now. It sounds like the responsibility falls back to the agency that it's under. So my recommendation is that I'd like to look into that a little bit more before I, I volunteer to, to do something like take on more responsibility. Uh, unless the sheriff uh, has any <clears throat> different feelings or he and I can get together and talk about kind that. Kind of the same way. I'd like to know a little bit more. I know that some of the um, reservations I would have would be people that are not dispatchers being in there. I know that we have tours, like for example, for the Citizens Academy, they come in, but for the most part, the dispatchers turn their screens over or blacken them out whether or not seeing the the, uh, the stuff that 
needs to be uh, screened. Uh, and when a tour group comes into the center, we have to minimize that seizure yeah. screen so that it cannot be seen by anyone in there. So, and that's, we do that. All printouts have to be surrendered as part of the security policy. And my way of thinking is the, whether it be Barstown Police or Nuska Sheriff, you're the overseer. You're the overseer to him to ensure that the policies are being followed. Well, I, I guess, and that would lead us though to the next question of where are we with our policies? So I want to make sure that we're, we have all that in place before the sheriff, or and I'm just speaking before we move on with that responsibility, we want to make sure we're compliant with that. And I'm, I'm calling it talk with Milton in reference to the policy and procedure in the past. Um, you know, if, if you're still operating under Debbie Carter's policies, let's make sure that we have them accessible and uh, so people can see them and stuff like that. So. Now, as far as the NCIC policy, I the procedures policy on the page numbers on it, but this is it. It was put into place our last audit which I believe was in 2017, we had to have it. And this has been reviewed and approved by our auditor at the time. So we've got that in place. And it should be closer to this as someone's taken it down. And it's like everything else is constantly, we're tweaking on it right now to make sure there's anything, nothing that hasn't changed. I've got the TAC and assistance I working on that. That's what they know. So that, that has been in place, and I'm sure it was in place prior to that, uh, but that has, what I've written, has been in place since 2017. Any other discussion on, on this topic? I put a motion to go ahead and um, start working to a resolution on the interlocal agreement with the language of either Sheriff's Office or BPD as soon as we find out, we can pencil that agency in. But for the most part, getting the lingo and, and having the time for an agency or the city council and the fiscal court to look it over and agree. And I know that the mayor is going to call the county judge and vice versa to make sure that they're in accordance with what we're submitting to them. So um, I, I think that. We're, we're burning daylight on, on not getting on, on something done well, for them to see. Did, any, did anybody have anything additional that they wanted to put to the draft that we I did. built a, a, a copy of there? We can go ahead and put that in an unofficial form. And have them look at it and see what they Well, want. I don't think we can submit it to them without that envelope agreement part. But we can, uh, can review it again and agree on it. This, let's do that and, and, and have it for the to next meeting look at them and then the, um, have, it, have it ready. Okay. But so we'll have the clean, unofficial draft ready for the next meeting. Okay. And prior to that meeting, the two of you are going to meet and decide who's, what do you think would be the best responsibility or who's over. over. You know, can you send out what, exactly what you have and what the, I would like to see the from the state exactly what that says because I would like to know the what does that report. entail and what does it entail because none of us are going to be back there with you to see this machine so we're going to have to take it that there's support to say that yes this is the procedure being followed because we're never going to see it unless we just come back there and watch you do it so we're never going to see the machine and understand that there's an audit in place that happens to them too on those records uh, you said 17 was last or probably <coughs> one. should be one this year I would just like to see what if that what it is that you have in your state that says one agency is going to be locked down on that. <coughs> Any other discussion? So we have Sheriff uh, Pinaroa's motion on the table for the, the to get the paperwork started. Do I have a second? Any all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passing. New business is the policies and procedures. Um, both the sheriff spoke about that here uh, earlier in the meeting um, that he was wanting to see the policies and procedures. And I also uh, just want to make sure that that our dispatchers have those policies and procedures as a, as a guideline 
and we have that in place. And so I've asked Milt um, to speak about where we are on our policies and procedures for the dispatch board. Okay. This okay. is one of the many boundaries I've been working out of the last couple of years. This is the uh, personnel policy that was approved by the uh, dispatch board October 31st, 2012. It's not all of our personnel policies. The other policies we are working on right now are a lot of memos that have been policy memos that have been handed or issued over the years by both myself and former director Debbie Carter. Some are outdated and have been pulled. Some are uh, have been added. Part of it have been added. Uh, these are several of them here. They need to be in a better format. Which I've got a format I want to put them in. They just have not gotten there at this point. Um, and there's a lot more to do. Uh, one of the most recent ones, and I believe you're going to put this one under a personnel committee. Is that correct? The policies? I mean, the policies actually fall, in, fall to you. I mean, well, if you decide to run those through the personnel committee, okay. I mean, you, can, you could definitely right, do so that. Personnel committee, I will be forwarding some things to you. One thing that we did not have is a uh, pursuit policy. And I've got that drafted, ready for review. There's a few others. Uh, active aggressor, which a lot of that will kind of also fall on some of the things with Mr. Deputy Boyles here that we've been working on. I'm also working on a, a one sheet for, a, let's say, a school. If something happens at this particular school, everything that the dispatcher needs at this moment in time is listed on this one sheet. Who to call, predetermined landing zones, staging areas, uh, different phone numbers for other agencies. If you call for Kentucky State Police or FBI or Louisville, that number is listed on there. There's no, it takes all the guesswork out of it and makes it easier for the dispatch. All I did is pull this one home. And ultimately, I'd like to have that in the CAD system as a document. And I believe we can put documents in here. Yes, you can scan them. And a document can just be added to that location note for whatever school and it's easily accessible right there. Check the contact. If you're calling, if you're wanting the FBI, you can pull up FBI and they'll tell you what. <coughs> and the form, when it's done, will look like this. You have all the information on it. So that if you need the number for uh, KSP 14, but it's KSP 4 for us, there it is. Landing zone 1, landing zone 2, EMS staging 1, EMS staging 2, fire response, all the other, other notifications you may need. So that's one of the things we're working on as well. Some old policy that we've got out and some standards that we'll put in place as well. So just to clarify, are you saying these are, are uh, your dispatch, your policies that you've implemented? These are some of the ones that I'm working on currently. These are what are in place at this moment that are all active or, or good or, or not outdated. So do we do we have policies on like the specific incidents of, of everything that we would respond to? On, on every incident, no. Like, I guess number do we have some I mean what, what, what kind of numbers are we looking at how, how many more do we have to go maybe that's a better question let's say for police for example runs about uh, holding runs and parking lot accidents in the city what to do on that as far as to if you get this call do this no I do not have that other that's not that. um, protection of worries calls for the uh, the city police media questions for, for them so, and, and I don't know how I've never been a dispatcher I'm not going to tell you how to do your job on it but like for us um, we have our policy and procedure it specifically in the top tells you what particular incident or what we're going for and then um, the purpose of it and, and we can show you mine that we've been working for the last year and it takes time uh, but kind of the redundant of memo type deal um, I would like to see it cleaned up into a format of kind of like what you had on that and kind of uh, hopefully that's what I want to look like correct I know Yes. And there are some of these here as well, but these are not, if you get this call, you do this. This is more administrative type policy on that right there. So, and I guess my question would be is how do we hold someone accountable if they don't do it correctly, if we don't have a policy and procedure? 
that they're to follow because then the, the they're going to say well I wasn't I wasn't trained in that so how do we how do we hold uh, dispatchers accountable or employees accountable for things if we don't have those policies in place I'm, I'm working on it I'm going to continue to work on it What, is what platforms are you building on? Are you just doing a Word document and drop them in a folder? Because what, you could do it in like a Google Docs where we could all kind of see it as it progresses, like the ones you currently have and, and the ones that you're building. And right now they're on Word, Word documents. So there are some platforms that could be done for everybody to see it and it cost anybody the money to be able to see that. Um, what I've found too is, and we talked about a lot of times, I think we're referring to a lot of things as. Uh, SOPs or uh, and a lot of it may be SOGs, a standard operating guideline. Mm -hmm. So you may have your basic policy procedures over here, but what you refer to as memos may become standard operating guidelines that would be more of a daily or weekly type of addition. <coughs> and, it, it, and it's the same I get what you guys are saying, and I guess me and Chief are kind of like looking at each other because that's not how law enforcement operates, and you guys are probably doing the same thing. You guys are similar onto the situational operating. I don't know how fire is. Never been a firefighter, never, I'm not going to tell you under that fire. Um, same thing, I don't know if it carries the same weight as what EMS is, is talking about. So you guys are kind of in a little bit in a better perspective of it. I mean, that's not that we're harping at mill. It's just that when we say policy and procedures, it's kind of like the guidelines that we go through as law enforcement. And it's just different terminology, I guess, of what we are going to use or, or go from. Yeah, that's kind of where maybe I got lost. Did you say the first one was like a pursuit policy? This one of the ones I've written recently, yes, this uh, like Maybe I'm lost. Months. I don't understand why dispatch has to have a pursuit policy. I mean, that would be y'all's department. But know. I think it, I think that's good to have one of a, or, or, or I'll terminology. I'll tell you why recent pursuit that my guys got into. No, I mean, I can see why you had one. I don't know why dispatchers were asking our guys how fast they were going. And that is in hours. And so that would be important for them to know this agency does it this way, this agency does it this way. Um, and I approach mail to mail. But if we're going to do it different ways for different agencies, that's going to cause a lot of confusion for dispatchers because when that happens, okay, what, what am I doing? We've got to simplify. I mean, there's, there's a lot on their plates. You know, when when you're on a fire run, that's, that's your run, but there's also a police run, an EMS run. The sheriff run going at the same time, these dispatchers are dealing with, with all of these. And it's probably a different things. type of stress and yeah, yeah. go right at yeah, the to, to try Because if, if we do it where we've got like 15 different ways to do something, we're setting them up for failure. It doesn't matter if you have SOBs or SOGs. <laughs> SOB, <laughs> you know, you're setting them up for failure. Um, and I guess it's still kind of, you say that they ask you what's the speed. Right. Are they asking for one of your supervisors to know? Or were they just asking for dispatch to know? I mean, no, no, no. what? The only, the only I used to be a dispatcher. I would never ask the police officer. The, the only thing would like, be my supervisor to be asking for what the speed was. I, and I, I can never say that. From a dispatch perspective, working with several pursuits, I kept my mouth shut. Yeah. I got 10 3 the air at the time, or set the marker tones down. And you let that second unit advise you everything, and you mm -hmm. just document, you just everything document that they exactly, say. Yeah. I'm going to ask them questions, yeah. uh, and now there's a, a long pause or a long silence to ask for a status check. Right. But I'm going to ask them a lot of questions. Right. Maybe it would be the same thing. We go to a house fire, and exactly. the dispatcher, well, what caused it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not your business. But I still think it's important to have the either the, the the guidelines like you were talking about the training guide or the policy and whatever your terminology is like the sheriff said we're, we're not over dispatch but some things that what is what are the steps that you know what should dispatchers be doing when a pursuit comes up clearing the channel notifying uh, adjacent jurisdictions that were coming your way so there should be certain things that a dispatcher should be doing and if they're not doing that how do they know not to do that if they don't have that written down so they they would know like okay i know they're going toward bullet county i need to notify bullet mm -hmm. county dispatch that we're coming into their area 
you know, uh, you know those type of things. I need to make sure the supervisors are aware that this is going on because they might not have heard it. They, they need to clear that channel and keep all that non-emergency uh, traffic off the and give that to the primary pursuit uh, pursuing officer. And so those are the things that I think are important when I look at like dispatch and why our policy is important to me uh, because we actually have it in our policy like dispatch should be doing those things but if we have it and they don't have it it's not really any good the other thing we'll do is we'll simulcast on both channels as well so if we're right now we're on one channel i want on both channels so if raymond's in howardstown and he's you know doesn't know what's going on in the city now he hears it it helps him if it's head that way it also helps you to know we got this going on right now if it's not if it's not a rush traffic kind of hold on to it <clears throat> Any other discussion on policies? Just one more question. Is it in a binder like that where they go look it up or can they pull it up on the computer? Right now, yeah, the course, no policies are on the computer. <clears throat> this will be binder and on the computer on our, our public drive on our server. I guess my next question would be is what kind of timeline uh, you know are we looking at we're, we're three years in now and we're still doing policy so what is our timeline to like moving forward do we have like a uh, we're gonna you know have so many done per month and kind of to make sure that we're progressing where we don't get three years down the road and still not have any so what's our progression of five, looking like? five policies at least per week Uh, any other discussion? So, and just the, the vast majority of what I've written, I've written at home after hours because it's just easier. The two distractions. No, you don't get in the road because that's like no. being in the office. I mean, it's. I think it's <coughs> so next on uh, new business is uh, Brian Foyles and. Uh, sure. Um, over the last two years, I've been working really good with the, the county schools, the city schools, on, uh, with their safety policy, mostly active stressor, uh, that kind of thing. We're to the point now, what I'm trying to accomplish is bringing the heads of the departments together. So, uh, I had Mr. Evans print out maps, um, aerial maps of all of our schools, things like that. My ultimate goal is to get the heads of departments together, sit down and us finally kind of mesh. Um, I know how I train my guys for active shooter, uh, but I'm not 100% on how you guys respond. I know me and Joe have had extensive conversations about what EMS is going to do, and I've talked to firefighters. So the goal is to kind of put everything together. Ultimately, I would like to have a just a full-blown exercise i think in a day I'm, I'm a really simple person when it comes to doing things like this um we haven't had one i've been here for 15 years and we haven't had one in at least 17. we haven't had a mass casualty event like this and from my understanding of it from the guys that were here it didn't end well um it got way too complicated way too quickly and I don't work that way. I'm, I'm pretty simple. I think in a simple eight hour day, we should be able to get three, four, five reps or something like this in, we all know. But getting agencies together to, to further with what Milt is, like his policy for the active aggressors that are taking place, he can't fill his stuff out if we don't give him the information he needs. He doesn't know what we're going to be looking for off the top of his head. We need to. Um, you know, with fire and EMS, where do you want your chopper? You know, we know they're coming. Where do you want them? So with these maps, um, you know, like I said, I, we got to bring out. Joe's got a hold of them right now. Getting the agencies together. So when we go to Bloomfield, where do you want your guys? Where do we need to stage your EMS? Where, you know, when we're in the city, where do you want your guys? You know, and all of us kind of put our heads together and it's something that we've never done. Um, it's never happened since I've been here, I know. Um, so that's kind of what I'm bringing in now. And I've got 
several department heads sitting in the room right now, so we thought it would be a good venue to, to come in and bring it with, plus the fact that ultimately it's going into you know, what Milt is going to be bringing to the table for his dispatchers and going, listen, these are what they're wanting. He knows where incident command is going to be. He knows where the media is going to go to because they're all going to call him anyways. You know, he's going to get 500 phone calls instantly. We need to be able to provide him with as much information as we can um, so that he, he does have it. He can't pull his form up and go, all right, if something happens here, these people are going here, 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 who's here, with, who we need to call, boom. And it's, and it's already set. So that's kind of why I'm here right now is to just bring you guys my ideas, what I would like to see happen from this point. Inside of the schools, like I said, we've got the schools on board. Um, Barstown has just been absolutely phenomenal to work with. Um, as far as the things that they've allowed me to come in and help with their faculty and stuff. Nelson County's bringing in you know, their navigational system. So inside of the schools, we're doing good. Now we need to get us meshed together so that we all <coughs> know what we're gonna do together when we respond. That's kind of where I'm at. Has St. Joe's done anything? Um, no, the only, I've got the county schools and the city schools, uh, as far as fast path, I've got them. The Catholic schools, I don't. I spoke to uh, St. Gregory's last year um, about it. The principal told me that you know they have a monthly meeting, the, the four principals, she was gonna address it with them and let me know, and I never heard anything back from them. Um, so I don't know how the Catholic school stands. To be honest with you, I haven't even spoken to Bethlehem or we mentioned it to Bethlehem, they were interested, but uh, they never want to be bothered with us. We don't contact you. Yeah, and I, I, I've not heard a word from any of them, and I, so I was kind of waiting to see what St. Gregory's had done. I didn't want to step on the nurse's toes and start asking around when she told me she was going to, so it might be time for me to just make phone calls to the Catholic schools and say, hey, look, <coughs> what everybody's doing, where are we stand with that? <coughs> so, any other questions you have, guys? For me, what do y'all want to know, or what are we saying? <coughs> no, I mean, I think you bring a valid point. I think it's really important that, because we know that if we do have an active shooter or, or a major incident like that, both the sheriffs, you know, deputies, and uh, my guys and girls will be heading that way. So I, I do think it's important that we do do some training together. Um, you know, also suggest maybe we start with the tabletop exercise mm -hmm. and then move it from there. Agreed. We have, for this size county, we have a multitude of resources that most of us don't even know what we have. Um, we are required annually to have an exercise in each county in the 120 counties. We may do over the past few years with some uh, on paper exercises, and this brings to light the fact that we do need to start with a tabletop and work that into a full blown exercise somewhere this year. Um, that will cover what the tabletop will cover one of our exercises, the full scale will cover what is required. Uh, and it will also cover what Flash A means for their accreditation. So it all kind of meshes together. And uh, I think we need to pursue the tabletop first to, to see how we can how we can best manage that. So Joe, are you uh, are you volunteering to, to start getting the all the right people in place for that tabletop? I, I'll I'll start the ball to roll, and hopefully other folks will jump on. Joe's been working with me. He's kind of like I'm like, hey Joe, how do I get all these people together? I just I've known Joe for that going long. I just go to him and go, how do I get everybody together? Go, okay, let's do this. I'm Make a plan so today. Who can do it? Who can do it? Yeah. Nobody can do. Uh, Dave, do you have anything you want to add? Um, not on this subject, but um, just on the private roads, which you know I've been kind of involved in the last few years. Um, had a gentleman contact me for uh, the Christmas uh, holidays about this road that's um, informally known as Whiskey Run off Monks Road. It's in the New Haven Rolling Fork Fire area, so it's really it's concerns the sheriff and uh, EMS and um, the Rolling Fork Fire District. <coughs> I know we're not here, but I'm going to bring this up again at our next fire chiefs meeting and uh, talk to them. But their input 
I think that it needs to be named formally Whiskey Run and the people on it readdressed to, uh, to, 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 to make it consistent with the NINA guidelines. That um, Mr. McMullen did contact me shortly afterwards to say he'd spoken with his neighbours and no one wants to change their addresses. Well, um, his compromise solution, if you want to call it that, is to put this kind of map that he created at the entrance to the private road so uh, emergency responders would see it and know where to go to find any one of the six addresses that are on this private road. And he also had this letter that um, I think Joe's seen. It's, uh, saying that he doesn't want to be transported to Flagey Hospital in a, an emergency. But um, do Joe or Sheriff, you have any thoughts on this? Should I push the private road on them? Or do you think this map compromise is going to work? No, I don't think. Them. I think we need to name the road. We've done the other roads that are private roads with more residences on them. And this this one's in the same county that we've done the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, this arises from a call that we got to the resident and our staff couldn't find it. And the gentleman got upset uh, that we couldn't find his house. So it wasn't marked a road, it wasn't marked an uh, address. And both those things have been addressed through local ordinances. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll write to them and tell them that this is the way it's going to be. Then. It's going to be Whiskey Run Road and we're going to, have to change your address. Because, I mean, it's, it, you're basic, we, it's, it's just like the ambulance crew. They get to the, he doesn't want to be transported to Flash A. Well, if he's unconscious, we don't know that. And we're going to go to the nearest facility. Yeah, I didn't know where you landed, you know, a legal or ethical standpoint. No, if if he's conscious and areas. can make a choice, we will do the best we can, as we've always had to take them to the nature of the, of the run. <laughs> but if it's a life threat, we're going to go to the nearest facility. Um, that's all I got. I got yeah, a, a, a few stats if you want to hear them. We named seven private roads in 2019. Uh, there were 16 new roads uh, in new subdivisions and things that were uh, 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 named also. Um, now we've had some problems locating these roads in the mapping services, Google in particular. I'm glad to say that that was like a focus for me, you know, in the last sort of two, three months of the year. We're now by my estimate, 92% of the roads named in Nelson County are searchable within Google Maps now. So that's a big improvement over where we were uh, just six months ago. I've seen the Google Map uh, vehicle burn around. <laughs> and back, back to Brian, uh, I didn't want to end without finishing. Thank you for coming over and bringing that to, to all of our attentions. Uh, that you know, I think it is very needed. And, Moving forward, I, um, Joe's going to um, look at dates to send out um, for the agencies, uh, and we'll move forward with that. I think that's a, a great thing to bring forward. Yes, um, any anybody have anything else? Okay. One, one other item I, I actually left out of the budget committee report. Um, we are due a financial audit, and I think the board needs to go ahead and, and um, take action on. Uh, moving forward with requesting that audit from one whoever milk can line up to get to do that for us, but we're a little past due on that. So I'd like to get a motion, or I'll make the motion, uh, that we uh, hire a firm to conduct our financial audit. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. And the last thing is, I just want to report to the board that. Uh, finally, we found a, a financial institution that could handle moving our funds over to the CDs that we had talked about a couple of months ago. Um, some of the financial institution wants one sole person to be responsible, and of course, we didn't want one person to be able to sign or do. So Lincoln National Bank did accept the three signatures and they can three folks. Thank you.
responsible for that. So that money is on the short-term safety. Okay. Real quick, when we started the meeting, we passed a roster. Um, if you have, and this is particular to you, if any of your staff wants the minutes, can you do a email so we can email add up the emails? Can we just also email it to whoever wants them? It's a, this is an easy fix. Uh, if, if they want to complain because they don't get them, they don't have to. They're going to be no. posted once they're official. I will make them sign that they wrote them. Okay. So yeah, I'll I like them. I'd be I'd be reluctant to put out an unofficial minute. But like today when we voted to accept the minutes, those two yeah. sets of minutes. And we can, but we can put that they're unofficial minutes. They have not been accepted. Or well, accepted that's maybe. printed on them, but so, I wouldn't want to put them out to two minutes until they're been made official by the board. I just think that you're you're dealing with employees that dispatch. Oh, employees that dispatch. So, I'm, yeah. I mean, no, that's that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm, unofficial minutes could be posted. Do we need a motion for that? All right. Well, just a re reminder. Um, so the committee meet. The committee um, committees will will meet sometime in the month of February uh, with any issues that you see are, are pending or that anything that we can do to improve uh, the dispatch center, especially with equipment. If they have equipment needs and things like that, you know, that's a great time to bring those needs to your equipment committee. And if, if there's any personnel issues, um, you know, they'll be available to you. Then we'll, we'll be meeting in March, March 10th, 9 a.m. Um, that's all I have, so. Uh, Chief, quick question. Yes. Uh, I was told we're now yes. there was an issue many weeks ago. Uh, you can see as far as the uh, delay in dispatching the call, uh, was that Resolve to your satisfaction that involved a firearm and a, somebody with five star or something like that. I, I do not have. I've not heard heard anything on that. We're going to discuss that further if you want to talk. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure it was resolved, resolved to your satisfaction. So it's still pending. Thank you. Uh, so ready for adjournment and um, let me get a motion for it to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Sure. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Are there any opposed? Motion passes.